good day everyone welcome back to uh, my stream um today actually i'm going to show you an, an opening that i play it's a variation of the french defense it's a line in the Tara variation of the french defense and i got a lot of success with this uh variation and blitz rapid classical and even play this game once over the board and totally crush my opening so i want to show you this uh this cool variation and i'm gonna do it in three segments first i'm gonna show you the main line i'm going to, after i'm gonna show you some some sideline and i'm gonna show you three games that i play recently online uh just to show you how powerful this opening is so without further ado let's just start right away with the main line so you get the french defense after you play uh, e4 e6 d4 and d5 and you can get this position if you're a d4 player you can start with d4 and if you go with e6 then you can throw this e4 and you get the same kind of position so uh what i recommend here is to play knight d2 i used to play knight uh, c3 but this it's really more just really more tactic and it's really more uh, aggressive to play a uh, knight d2 that 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 can come with some uh, awesome tactic id in the future um after you play a knight uh, d2 they respond with knight to f6 you kick the knight here uh with e5 um they cannot really go knight there because they're just gonna lose the knight that's uh that's just ridiculous so they have to go and uh, knight to d7 and you bring your bishop to d3 now um they play a c5 and you play a c3 here to just make some breathing room for the bishop and kind of uh, create some support on the pawn and they have to play they really have to play this uh this pawn uh to a c5 because if you try something like this i mean um this this is just bad like the, the bishop's never gonna move and uh, there's no break happening in the middle you're just gonna play the pawn c3 anyway and look at the percentage of winning is it's 61 percent of winning for white and stockfish gave uh, 1.3 so it has to move they have to move uh, uh c5 so after you move c5 you play this pawn to c3 they move the knight here uh on uh, c6 and what i recommend here is actually play knight f3 there's there's a lot of video on youtube there's a lot of grandmaster played the, this knight to e2 um knight to e2 is actually pretty great uh, you keep the pawn in the middle you keep the structure but i prefer a knight to f3 knight to f3 come with an amazing id and when you play knight to f3 the response with the queen to b6 with the idea of just putting pressure on the pawn in the middle and then you uh, castle so the whole purpose of this id is actually to uh, sacrifice a pawn uh, in the middle normally when you play the knight to e2 you can actually reroute this knight to f3 so you got both of the knight hanging to the pawn and keeping the keeping the pawn but in this case you want to uh, sacrifice the pawn in the middle so the reason when you want to sacrifice the pawn in the middle is you want to create um uh, some breathing room for the queen to to switch from one side to the other side so after you take with the pawn you're gonna take back here um he's gonna capture with the knight you're gonna capture back with the knight he's gonna take with the queen and now you're gonna bring your knight to f3 targeting the queen keeping this pawn defended this bishop is defending queen has to go back if queen goes to a g4 uh, queen might just be trapped in the future so queen to a b6 uh it's it's the main line and now you, you throw this queen to a4 and here if you look back black position black does not this not castle yet um this bishop is kind of awkward this uh to be to be able to castle you have to move the bishop so the common move is actually bishop to e7 and now you, you move the queen on the other side to g4 so now already you see the pressure this pawn is under attack he has to do something this natural castling move uh unfortunately doesn't work because you're just going to throw this bishop h6 with the idea of just capturing up here and uh, go for the checkmate at once and he's actually forced to uh, play something like g6 to prevent the checkmate and now you just capture capture and this is totally winning uh for white is 1.5 uh if you look at stockfish stockfish is is 1.5 so 
uh, if you go with this variation it's completely winning and if you go g6 instead um, just to prevent uh, what i like to play here is actually to play bishop to h6 just to prevent him from castling so castling won't happen and there's there's a few options that the black can play and uh, one i see mo most often is actually queen x b2 and after that you just move the rook here and you can even give up both of the pawn to get this uh, kind of a position where sh that's uh, that's an, ex an example uh, an example that can happen you just move the bishop you go check and you trap the queen you can see the queen is trapped that's one of many examples that you can actually happen in this position all right so so this is the main idea of, of the position and if you um by experience the things you need to be careful of the first uh, never exchange a queen white's queen need to keep on the board so this is one of the example that can happen and some of a variation queen need to stay on the board the second thing you need to know is this pawn here in the middle this e5 pawn you need to keep the e5 pawn the second you, you just remove the e5 pawn he's gonna he's gonna create some some break here in the future he's gonna push this and this bishop is gonna be free and you're gonna be just gonna be dominated so it's actually okay to give this pawn or this two pawn on the queen side but the e5 pawn is really really strong you have to keep an eye on it and the third thing you need to keep in mind is this bishop and knight this bishop and knight and rook is you want to keep them you don't want to help in developing you want to keep them as close as possible and like a few games that i play and move 15 i got this position and and this knight and rook and bishop was still at this position and i feel like all the pieces are awkward so this is the thing you need to keep in mind keep the queen on the board keep this pawn on the board and try to keep these pieces on the board and there's a few plan that can come to mind like this can be a weakness in the future so if you bring your queen bring your knight this can be a target um this c7 can be a, a cool place to bring the rook if the queen ever move away and this bishop can even sacrifice in some variation so this is the thing you need to keep in mind but just to be careful don't exchange the pawn don't exchange the queen and try to keep these pieces on the board and everything is going to be fine what happens if he doesn't bring the knight out um if he doesn't bring the knight out uh and he tried to play um c5 the idea is to actually to try to transpose into uh, the variation that we saw earlier so here what i recommend is either play c3 or play knight f3 with the id if he does bring the knot here and go this way you get the same kind of position and be careful here you don't want to play a bishop to d3 because bishop d3 will be bit by pawn push or even pawn capture and you won't have the same play so you need to play c3 first and if you play c3 and he decide to push this pawn so the bishop cannot go on d3 but your position is actually really okay you, you can just play bishop e2 here and after something like knight there you can even play reroute the knight or castle first and after you're gonna play h4 h5 h6 and everything is gonna be um is gonna be good so so he has to you cannot really push here because you're just going to have a better position so you have to play knight there and now you play this bishop to d3 and you'll get the same kind of position that we you get the same position that we discussed earlier on and if he doesn't if he doesn't go with the knight there you try to delay the knight once again um i recommend to just keep with the same id here going going with c3 and now if you bring the knight you, you push this you get the same kind of position so the idea is always to transpose into this position and every variation if it does not go for it like perhaps if he exchange in the middle if you exchange in the middle here well you'll have an interesting really an interesting position after this exchange and uh, white has a, a better bishop uh, development and this knight is just a monster knight white can either castle queen side or king side and i play this cut this position a couple times and every time we're just 
really good for me so if if they don't get into the main variation you'll still have a pretty good game now i'm gonna cover uh what happens if he doesn't trade in the middle um in some variation after d5 you you play this knight d2 he played nine knight f6 you push on e5 you bring your bishop out you're happy with the bishop you play this pawn c3 uh, bring your knight to f3 getting ready to sacrifice in the middle and your castle and in decide not to go uh knight to go not to take the pawn but either to play something like bishop e7 instead what i recommend is playing rook e1 rook e1 uh, you keep the same plan if he does capture but if he does not capture perhaps he's just go something like castle I'm, I, what i recommend is bring the knight to f1 and believe it or not this pawn is actually now covered so it's not it's not a sacrifice anymore if you try to be greedy and capture here he just gonna fell into a lot of trouble after uh, you capture here with check and just recapture the queen so this happened a few times on lee chess this game, uh, this 10 game on Lee Chess that that happened. I believe three of the game that is actually me playing it. So it, it, it's happening. It's always good to keep that in mind. But um, if the, if the, now they decide to, to take and you're just going to keep the same plan. You're going to capture, exchange it, bring your knight here with adding a defender to this pawn, attacking the queen. Queen has to move back and that's the only only situation that i don't bring the queen to e4 and the reason is if you keep the same plan the castle and you bring the queen there you actually got this this uh pong attacking and pong attacking um you have to take a pass on you got this knight there and i don't really like it because if you're not careful you can either uh, exchange and he can either exchange the queen perhaps if you try to go queen there putting pressure you can just bring the queen there and force the exchange of the queen if you're bringing queen up this this is bishop id putting pressure and you notice that this knight and the bishop is going to come here and you don't have a pawn in the middle so the three things that you need to be careful of don't lose the pawn in the middle and uh, keep try to keep the bishop and the knight on this position it's just not going to happen so so Black is going to be better after a few moves. Black is going to be better. Computers say Black had have a stock face advantage of 0 0.2. It's an even position, but I just don't like to play it. So in this case, what I prefer is actually Bishop C2. Uh, Bishop C2 just keeping the pressure on H7 and keeping the pressure on this open file. Um, here, you, you, they can play H6 or they can play something like knight there that's that's a variation what i recommend if they play knight uh to uh, c5 is actually to bring the bishop to e3 pinning the knight uh, in front of the queen so making some development i bring this rook back he bring the rook here because the knight is pinned and i just play queen back and actually i, I reach this position a couple times and the only move that's good for white is it's the only move to keep uh, to keep a draw to keep a, a, a not the advantage but to keep to, to fight for for a win or to fight for a draw is actually to play a5 uh, just to prevent my uh, b4 because b4 come with a pin on the queen but uh, it's just so much natural for for them to just move the queen back but there is getting a lot of trouble after you take on h7 and if you decide to be greedy by just blocking the bishop you can actually just sacrifice sacrifice forcing the king to move and just look at the analyze uh it's plus five and the top 20 moves are actually good for white so it's not you don't even have to know by heart or have to know um the exact line to keep the advantage so any plan is basically a winning plan since the king is in the middle and these pieces is are are, are really really hardcore um so h6 is is the most is the is is the second or the first most popular move after the knight and what i recommend here is actually to bring this bishop out to target the queen and just keeping the, the this this pawn on the board try to keep this these pieces as i mentioned so i'm not going to encourage him to move the pieces and after something like this if you look um on 
on a master database there's only one game that i've been played on master database but on late chess database um there's a few games that have been played and white have a lot of a percentage of, of winning um and if you look on the analyze it's 0 0.0.3 but but the main the main id here is actually to um maybe in the future to swivel your 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 queen on the other side or just bring your rook here on c7 or bring your rook here on c3 and double up the rook on the open file so everything come everything is naturally and on the other end black has a lot of uh, possible a lot of uh it can blunder from every perspective i mean like you need to move the knight but where you move the knight you cannot move the knight out of where there um moving the knight there is is is, is kind of a, a a blunder already you can even sacrifice the queen and after take take care with check and have to play with the queen so he has to be careful really really has to be careful this is, is this is why he's really fun to play i'm just going to show you um take take uh because your bishop is blocking this he has to block this he's hope you can get a lot uh, this kind of position with this with this uh a variation so black has to be careful and got and got some interesting game uh, with this uh variation so um if it does not trade in the middle that's not really bad uh you can get some awesome game too I'm going to show you now the uh, if he played perfectly and did his research with this opening and decide to grab the pawn on the middle with c4 you take back you take with the knight you take with the queen you bring the knight to f3 you bring the queen back uh, you bring the queen to a4 so if you, we saw it that if you bring this bishop out uh, here or here you're just going to switch the queen there and that's going to cause a lot of trouble but what happens if you play uh, uh, the best move, which is bishop b4? Well, uh, we saw it. We don't want to exchange the queen. So we're just going to move the queen back to c2. And here, actually, one of the most popular move, uh, main idea, is actually to play a, bish, a queen to a c5. Just putting pressure. Then again, we don't want to exchange a queen. So what I recommend here is queen e2. And when the second you move the bishop, you bring your bishop out. And you bring your knight to uh, c1. So you get this position. If we look at stockfish here, a stockfish would say it's a 0 0.9 advantage, but a lot of line is winning for white. It's one slightly mistake, and a white can be dominated. There's always a sacrifice to keep in mind, and there's always this rook ID on c7 that is just a monster ID. And all of this winning variation. Uh, I'm going to repeat myself, but the main thing is keep the pawn here and actually uh, keep the bishop and the knight on uh, the bishop and the knight and the rook on this exact square. And if you achieve that, uh, you're going to be winning. So without further ado, let's jump right into uh, some game that I play. So the first game uh, that I'm going to show you, it's actually versus a 23 81 it's a game that i played during my stream um it started with e4 e6 uh, d4 uh, d5 i played this knight uh, to d2 he bring the knight out uh, i bring my bishop i cover the pawn making some breathing room for the bishop he bring this knight i bring my knight to f3 he bring the queen i castle he take he decide to take the extra pawn so we got this variation I played bishop e4 uh, this guy was booked so he played bishop, uh, queen to b4 i played queen c2 um, he played bishop e7 i kick out the queen with uh, a3 this 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 many option here uh, i really like a3 because a3 come later on with b4 preventing the knight to come and maybe in the future having this bishop here or uh, bring both of the rook here and open up the queen side so and he decided to shift the queen on g4 so that was a, a completely new game i only played this game once i got i only got this position once uh, versus this guy and i follow up with with b4 in this case and the idea with the b4 is he, i don't want to help him develop this knight but if you bring the knight there knight's going to be a little bit awkward 
And I don't want any piece to go on a c5. You move the queen back. And uh, why moving the queen back is because uh, if you did castle, then I still have the battery here. So now we want to prepare for castling. I move this bishop to uh, b2, e castle, and I play h3 here. h3 with the idea of uh, pushing uh, the pawn and making some breeding room for the knight so I can reroute the knight to g4 if ever needed to. E, I push the pawn with f6. I bring this rook on, on e1. The exchange in the middle, I take with the rook. And here I play some uh, amazing uh, move. I play queen there. Queen there, create a battery on this uh, e6 and cover this h5 square. So, so everything is about the h5 square. You're going to see in a moment. So kicking out the knight, that's the kicking out the rook. So rook has to go and look like he's winning a piece and I'm bringing back my queen on the king's the queen side but I actually can kick out his queen and after it capture here I got this a rook to h5 which is kind of the queen is kind of a trap so we saw it if you decide to move the queen on the king's side a lot of time the queen can be trapped and this is one an example and this guy is, is ready 2381 so decide to 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 keep for a few move but uh, here he resigned because this is uh, a maiden one. So after he took my 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 bishop here, uh, I just moved the bishop back, and it did not even <laughs> let me play this maiden one. But there's nothing you can do after queen checkmate on h7. So this is, was the first game. So the second game that I want to show you uh, is from uh, a guy rated twenty one eighty three. So the game started. The same as we saw before uh, we got the main the same variation he decided to capture go ahead for the for the pawn i bring this queen there and play this uh, bishop to c5 so what do i do play bishop to c5 i immediately transfer my queen to g4 and um, he decided this guy played this uh, crazy rook king to f8 i i guess like he doesn't really want to play this because maybe he's scared of the bishop bishop's going to be annoying he cannot castle as we saw previously uh, that will be uh, uh, that will be a blunder so he decided to play king to f8 kind of uh, keeping the piece defended and keeping this rook defending to this pawn so maybe putting the pawn pushing the pawn in the future so i push h4 immediately he decided to push h5 uh, i bring my queen uh, I move my queen there, putting pressure on this pawn. He, move, he, bring, he bring this bishop. I bring the knight. The knight ID is, is actually to, um, the first thing is actually to create a checkmate ID. And so we have to react to this. But then secondly, uh, maybe creating pressure with e6. Um, so he uh, moved the pawn here to prevent, to prevent uh, me from taking with a checkmate. I actually did not take Alpasa. I believe that was a mistake. So I decided, I mean, if I keep the pawn and manage to, to capture this pawn in the future, this pawn is going to go down because you have two attack. So this is why I decided to go for uh, for, the, for the queen. Um, he made an in-between move, capturing up the knight. Cannot really capture because I'm just going to capture back. He got this queen taken here. And now I was so excited. I sacrificed the bishop. After sacrificing the bishop, if you look... At analyzing mode it's a plus 3.8 but um that's once again it's 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 plus 3.8 if a blind play uh the perfect uh, sequence but every 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 plan for white it's winning plan even though you you dumb material just because of the misplays of the pieces and the king is is, is kind of exposed so uh game uh, uh the game uh, was actually a checkmate in the next four moves. So king move, I play check, I play check here, and that was checkmate. So trapping the king in the corner. So look at these pieces and the pawn. This is what I'm telling you about. If you keep that on the board, you're going to have some amazing game. All right, so let's jump with game three. Game three, it's versus a 2239 uh uh rated 2229 rated and actually happened in one of my live stream um so we got the same kind of position we got the french defense on the board he decided to take we got the same id i bring the queen he bring this bishop there 
and actually bring the queen to g4, you bring the pawn to g6, bring my bishop to a6, prevent him from castling. Uh, you bring the knight here to uh, target the bishop. So I just move the bishop back one square. So the bishop is covering all the square that the knight can go. Uh, it took with the queen, I actually uh, bring the rook to c1. So just taking advantage of this open file. Once again, it doesn't matter if you give both of the pawn on the queen side. Uh, your piece are just good with coordination and the tactic will come naturally. See, uh, so I didn't care. So he's up to pawn. But look at the look at the analyze. It's plus one for me, and like the top the top ten move are actually uh, even or winning for white. So bring the bishop out, and I play a uh, knight g five, and I did a, a a a bad mistake here. And even though I play a bad mistake in this game, I managed to win. But just to want to show you, just to keep in mind the mistake that I did, I actually gave up the pawn in the middle. And now it's it's, it's minus three for uh, white and uh, for black. That's mean it's winning for black. And I, I should have not play. Um, I should have not play this like something like bishop f4, just putting pressure. Maybe rerouting the knight was even better. Perhaps if you try something like this, then you can even uh, just go ahead with capture with the bishop. You cannot even kick out the queen because this bishop is guarding this f8. And now it's plus three for white. So keep that in mind but you know I'm, I'm i'm human i made a mistake i let i let this uh, pawn to e5 hanging he did take the pawn now it's minus three for him i'm gonna show you the game uh, continue with the rook here taking advantage and now he's up three pong but even when you do a mistake um even when you do a mistake i got this kind of a position that even by making some mistake you get you you can get the advantage because your piece is just really more active and this game ended in in style by uh bring the rook here kind of a sacrificing the rook uh but uh after you take the queen i just take back with the rook and play this end game with both of the rook against a knight and the bishop but i could have lost this game this game was actually winning for black uh but i managed to win and the, one of the reasons i managed to win is actually because it took a lot of time to figure it out to figure out the good move on the other end i was prepared for my opening so i got the time advantage at the end and that gave me the possibility of striking forward and winning the game and overall with the french defense this taraj variation i have like 80 percent um a win over 2000 and over I have like 80% of, of winning and 10% of drawing and only 10% of losing. And 10% of losing are a lot of time due to the fact that I made some common mistake like this game. But in general, I have a really successful game with this opening. So go ahead and try it and let me know uh, if you like it, the video. Let me know if you like the video. Let me know if it worked for you. It also worked for you. And... I'll see you guys in my stream live. Thank you again. See you guys.